Now you can see here it says this is from Denitra Senegar. That's who it's from. This is to Hillary Clinton. Important for context. And then it says, oh, you can read it there. Can you see what it says? I mean, requesting documents pertaining to the resurrection chamber of Gilgamesh, the location of his body, and the location of the buried Nephilim. I was told that the device um, it was like it was like a uh, had like puzzle pieces around the perimeter of the circumference, and depending on the sequence, you rotated the inner ring uh, to match the outer ring, and depending on the sequence you used to match the outer ring to align the puzzle up, it would have a certain reaction. Most of the time, the scientists had no results, but if you hit the right sequence, it would create some sort of a wormhole. Short. The ozone layer is comprised of O3. O3 freezes into a solid at 420 degrees below Fahrenheit. Outer space, and flat earthers, don't give me a hard time about that term. It's outer space. It's space out there. It's the best term we have. The temperature of outer space is negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit, making it colder than the freezing point of oxygen. Therefore, it's highly possible that that oxygen is freezing up there into a glass-like substance. When oxygen freezes, it turns a light blue. Hmm. Alexa, could you please tell me who all the investors in TikTok are? Why don't we find out who really owns TikTok? Then maybe we don't have to worry so much about China if we realize that the main investors are American. Yep. Thanks, Alexa. You, wanna stay? you might want to stay till the end for this one. Oh, this just shows you how much research you do because you just ask Alexa. Alexa sometimes spills the beans and then I fact check her. I'm kind of like the Mark Zuckerberg of the Alexa. Anyway, enjoy. <laughs>
When the giants heard this, many chose to act in defiance. While these fragments were incomplete at this point, the Manichaean literature ends the story by telling of the hosts of God beating the race of giants in battle. An incredible story, one which dates back from far within our ancient past. In 1971, J.T. Millick discovered several Aramaic fragments of Enochic works among Dead Sea Scrolls at a site known as Qumran. Among the fragments discovered were 10 manuscripts of the Book of Giants. These fragments were found in six different caves which dotted the site. These scroll discoveries allowed for further refinement of the works and is now seen as a virtually complete ancient text. Is this story yet more compelling proof of an ancient race of giants who once dwelled and later perished here upon our planet? Or perhaps just a religious fairy tale? Regardless of this, it is an impressive and amazing story in its own right. One which has managed to survive untold millennia to reach us in the modern day. A story many people throughout history saw it incredibly important to preserve and communicate to others. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. So it's interesting. A question that we come across is, if they did it a second time with a second incursion, how come there aren't giants today? Or if it was a dormant gene, what would have caused that dormant gene? So I came across an entirely different theory, and this one is regarding Ham. The curse of Ham was imposed on Ham's son, Canaan, hence where the Canaanites came from. And the reason for that, uh, most people think, is that uh, Can saw his father naked, um, made fun of him. But what if it is deeper than that? What if there's more meaning behind the words, he saw his father in his nakedness? Now, it's been debated for a long time the reason why Canon was cursed. I came across this particular theory. They suggest that Ham engaged in intercourse with his mother, Noah's wife, and the support for the theory can be found in verses such as Leviticus 20.11, which says, A man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness. According to this interpretation of the story, Canaan was the offspring of the illicit union between Ham and his mother. Now, Lying with his father's wife would uncover his father's nakedness because in the word of God, a man and a woman who are married are one flesh. So if you see your father's wife's flesh, you it is just like seeing his. Which brings me to my theory. If the Nephilim DNA was dormant in his wife and there was not enough to have it live on in a family. But through the act of having a child with his mother, that little bit of DNA was doubled. And then after that happened, when the curse of Ham came, what did, they, what did God say? Do not recreate with those people. Could the reason for that have been so that the DNA didn't get strengthened further, which brings me to the line that all of our presidents come through and the bloodline that they still follow to this day. Is this the reason? What do you guys think? I really want to know because it kind of makes a lot of sense to me. Our next video is about Nimrod, a.k.a. Gilgamesh. Nimrod, the rebel in the Bible, may also be known by the name Gilgamesh. In the ancient epic, Gilgamesh was a demigod from Uruk, which is biblical Erech, E-R-E-C-H, and modern-day Iraq. If you recall, Abraham was also plucked out of this area in the Bible, which, if you look at the map, is modern-day Iraq, Iraq as well. Recall Abraham's dad, Terah, was one of Nimrod's faithful servants. So you have three different kinds of geographical proofs right here that Abraham, his dad, and Nimrod all dwelled in what is known today as modern-day Iraq. This matches up with the story about Gilgamesh being in modern-day Iraq as well. According to Genesis 10, 
It says, quote, the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom was Babel, Eric, Akkad, among others, in the land of Shinar, Genesis 10, 10. The story says that Gilgamesh was eager to make a name for himself and set out on an adventure with his half-animal, half-hybrid friend in order to ask survivors from the flood the secret of immortality. It is interesting to note that in the Epic of Gilgamesh, the flood is taken as a matter of historical fact. There is no explanation given in the Epic, but everyone who obviously reads and believes the story would know that there had been a flood prior. Gilgamesh's name itself means ancestor hero, which points us back to Nimrod, who began to be a Gibor, which means hero in Hebrew in the Bible. If you are interested in further learning about the connections between Gilgamesh and Nimrod, Trey Smith does a fantastic one-hour documentary on that topic. We were recently talking about the possibility that the Iraq War was actually over Gilgamesh's tomb and body and not the reasons that they gave us. Uh, this particular video tells us where this theory actually originated from. Well, leaked emails to Hillary Clinton shows that the powers that be just might have had a reason to keep this discovery a secret. Now you can see here it says, this is from Denitra Senegar. That's who it's from. This is to Hillary Clinton. Important for context. And then it says, well, you can read it there. And you see what it says? I mean, requesting documents pertaining to the resurrection chamber of Gilgamesh, the location of his body, and the location of the buried Nephilim. Now, why would Ms. Clinton be so interested in that particular body? It's supposedly their bloodline. Want to know what's even weirder? Witnesses claimed that the military immediately set up an encampment around the grave of Gilgamesh as soon as they landed in Iraq. They reportedly sent reporters and locals out of the region and pretty much overran the entire area. Some witnesses also claim that the military began excavating items from the site, moving them to an undisclosed location. And besides all this, reports of the discovery of Gilgamesh's grave were pretty much wiped off the internet. It was basically like this thing never existed. To be fair, this might all Requesting the documents pertaining to the resurrection chamber of Gilgamesh. The same Gilgamesh that I told you years ago, they found his body in Iraq. And it disappeared. I don't think it disappeared. My opinion is that it is over at CERN, waiting for re reanimation. What do you guys think? Do you think the spirit of Nimrod is going to be put back in to this body? Or do you think they're going to create him a brand new one with his DNA? Or do you think that none of that is even possible? I want to know down below. Next up, we are going to be talking about pre-flood stone pillars that were found by Moses, allegedly. Did Moses write the first five books of the Bible based off some notes left by Noah before the flood? That's next on the trumpet. Actually, Methuselah, Noah, and Shem, the year before the flood, inscribe on two pillars, the history and discoveries of the world which stood in Moses' time 777 years after the flood. Methuselah actually talked with Adam for 243 years, learning the world's history from the beginning. Methuselah wrote that on these two pillars, are the books that Moses had access to. And remember, Noah and Shem were with him. Moses had access to those stone pillars 777 years later, and he wrote down the history of the world in the first five books of the Bible. Wow. You got to remember that Methuselah was Enoch's son. And Methuselah would have probably done a fine job writing down what all happened to his daddy Enoch. You got to think about it. Pre-flood, these guys are living like 900 years. Imagine what you could learn and master in a lifetime that long. The environment was entirely different. There was more oxygen. People were bigger. Plants were bigger. Animals were bigger. 
It's amazing. During the days of Jared, which is Enoch's father, and that's exactly when the Nephilim and the fallen angels descended to earth and made all the giants. You can see right there, Tubal Cain's a part of this. Naamah, and that's actually Noah's wife. Go to my bio page and see we are linked back to Noah's wife, who had dormant Nephilim DNA in her. This really does support the theory that I talked about earlier. Click on that link tree button right there. And right there, you'll find links to all my work. There's the Amazon page right there. And if you scroll down, there's that map right there. Now, this is one of the coolest things that my wife bought me. It's 23 foot long, and oh, wow. I enjoy every minute of reading this thing. That is a huge timeline. If you're looking for an affordable timeline that uh, you can put on your wall to track the, the biblical events, there's one called uh, the Dakes Plan of the Ages. You can get it for $14.99, and I swear it's probably three feet long, and it, that's supposed to be the small version. Um, I'll link it in the video if you're interested. I, I It's great. Our next video is about a device that they supposedly found in Gilgamesh, a.k.a. Nimrod's tomb, that opens portals. As might find interesting, so I wanted to share that with you here on our Patreon channel. And so, one of the things that was shared with me is that the movie Stargate, uh, that I think came back out in the 90s, was actually predicated on the events that took place in Colorado. Now, it's not actually what happened there, by no means, but it was to, it kind of gives you an idea of what they were actually dealing with. Uh, there was actually a device that was discovered uh, in the Middle East there, and it's that device that they took uh, to the underground facility, which is about 27 stories underground. 27 stories under in an underground bunker there uh, where this device was taken to, where scientists were studying it, trying to figure it out, etc. And so I'm going to take you, like I said, really on the inside of a conver the conversations that we have so you can kind of get a better idea of what, what, what I actually get to hear myself. So anyway, he says that the movie Stargate is predicated on an event in Colorado, and there are several mountains there with different types of bunkers, including uh, for nuclear war, et cetera. And another bunker was for scientific analysis. And there was, there's where the device uh, that they had discovered in the Middle East, the device uh, was actually housed in that facility, 27 stories underground. And I was told that the device um, it was like, it was like a, uh, had like puzzle pieces around the perimeter of the circumference. And depending on the sequence, you rotated the inner ring uh, to match the outer ring. And depending on the sequence you used to match the outer ring to align the puzzle up, it would have a certain reaction. Most of the time, the scientists had no results. But if you hit the right sequence, it would create some sort of a wormhole. Wow. But it wasn't a wormhole like the movie uh, similar to a wormhole, like, excuse me, or, but similar to a door or a portal that CERN can open. The scientists believe that they actually did to start with is they, they wanted to take and to try to figure out all the different frequencies and exactly where those frequencies led uh, and things like that before they really got in to try to dial out. So that's what they practiced to begin with without actually dialing out. Um, but but at one point they did they were sitting there uh, working and they actually got a call back in and um, uh, what happened it was it's like an echo got they got an echo back while they were uh, not using the device so as this device echoed the decision was made that whoever or whatever was calling had to be an intelligent life form in order to be able to operate the device in the first place. What, it was operating the device from the other side of the door? Oh, no. I don't so think so. <laughs> the decision was made to actually answer that call. Heck no. And what is ironic was that the scientists never considered the possibility that the device could receive incoming calls in the first place. So when the call was answered, 
they brought in a worm type of creature. It's almost like a pun, right? Create a wormhole for a worm type of creature. Uh, but when that worm's uh, creature came in, which he was actually the size of a human being, so like about a six foot long worm, but with the mass of a human, when the worm actually came in, he began to slaughter everyone in the room. Uh, now the uh, room, like I said before, was 27 stories below the ground in a bunker. And the Marines who were there, who were assigned to guard those scientists, which believe it or not, yeah, they do have Marines, fully armed Marines that are always guarding these scientists and things in these bunkers below. They engaged this worm, shooting it, but to absolutely no avail. It didn't seem to bother the creature whatsoever. That it was How many movies and TV shows do we have that have a theme where there's some sort of creature in an underground base that just goes ape you know what and kills everybody on lives everybody <laughs> wow was being shot and um and then the uh the it's in the room there but the the creature also began to work its way out and begin to go up to the next levels um, and they realized that if this creature got out there was no telling what was going to happen on the planet so they got, they brought in, it was actually 300 cement trucks, uh, and within three hours and buried from the 25th floor down to the 27th floor and nothing but concrete, just poured it down, uh, figuring that that would actually seal this worm-like creature in there, uh, to where he could not get out, which... Un until what? somebody digs it up what if it's just like alive frozen in cement until someday well we, we i guess we really don't have that much time do we jesus is coming pretty soon it, it actually did work so but at any rate wow it was the colorado device the device or excuse me the device uh from the middle east that they had in colorado uh, as what was the what predicated the cern project and so um uh, I, I'd ask the question, what was in Nimrod's tomb that really helped give CERN its boost? And the idea with CERN was to have, you know, was, uh, which I got the answer to that, but I'll kind of tell you the way it was answered to me. Uh, the, the whole idea of CERN was to have control over the gateway is what they right. wanted to be able to do. And, uh, and of course, the, I'll back up, I'll go to the, to the gateway. To what? Maybe the bottomless pit? Last part here, that way you'll know about the CERN or the Nimrod's tomb. Then I'll read to you what the purpose of all this was. Um, Nimrod's tomb actually uh, wasn't that it actually contained a device. It actually contained the information uh, regarding the frequencies and including a frequency that went to directly to God himself. Uh, but the question was raised wow. which god oh, because anyone that knows nimrod nimrod was not interested in uh the true heavenly father so it was which god was he serving but he had a frequency that, that supposedly uh went directly to whichever god it was that he served yeah the and same so, god that the leaders of this world serve today so with that being said there they they needed the information out of Nimrod's tomb to better know how to, to create a device that would actually give them the control versus that of what we had with the device that we brought out of uh, the Middle East and we had no control over it. So uh, as, as it was related to me, uh, we didn't have a, uh, we, they didn't want to have a repeat event like what they had in Colorado. So they, um, uh, let's see. So, so they decided that um, they didn't want other creatures coming into the places uh, from other dimensions. So the original device worked somewhat like a telephone line where you uh, have a TX and a CV line. Did they not want it to open so that they couldn't come through or did they want to be able to control what and when it came through? Because I cannot help but think about the Miami Mall incident and how they said the younger people came in and set some sort of a device up. 
That's the first place my mind went. There's been a lot of talk lately about TikTok and their, the possibility that they could be banned. This video is from a woman, I like to call her the Alexa Whisperer because she has a knack for rewording her questions in so many ways that Alexa has really no choice but to answer her. So let's hear what she found out from Alexa this time. Alexa, could you please tell me who all the investors in TikTok are? How do we find out who really owns TikTok? Follow then maybe the we money. don't have to worry so much about China if we realize that the main investors are American. Yeah. Thanks, Alexa. You, stay, you might want to stay till the end for this one. Oh, this just shows you how much research you do because you just ask Alexa. Alexa sometimes spills the beans and then I fact check her. I'm kind of like the Mark Zuckerberg of the Alexa. Anyway, enjoy. Alexa. Why are they trying to ban TikTok again and rush it through so quickly? The attempt to ban TikTok is due to national security concerns for the United States. Lawmakers who support the blacklisting of TikTok on state-owned devices say there are real potential threats to user data privacy and that they worry that China could order TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, to collect data on American users. Alexa, could you please tell me who all the investors in TikTok are? Libertiestocktrader.com. Shares in TikTok are owned by the founder Yiming Zhang, ByteDance, and seven private equity firms, Coachu, General Atlantic, Hillhouse, KKR, Sequoia Capital, SoftBank, and SourceCode Capital. Are there any American investors in TikTok? To do this, just ask me on your mobile device. Wow, it seems like you keep wanting me to switch over to the phone when I feel really comfortable, you know, talking to you like this. I mean, I'm doing- That's weird. Why switch to your phone? My nails. Can't really switch over to my phone right now. So let's ask again. Alexa, are there any American investors in TikTok? To do this, just ask Alexa, me- Alexa, stop. Alexa, what American investors are there on TikTok? Variety.com. TikTok Global will be majority owned by American investors, including Oracle, Walmart, and four VC firms, which are each existing ByteDance investors, Susquehanna International Group, General Atlantic, Sequoia Capital, and Coachu Management. Let's see, you did it again. I bet you did. Did Oracle and TikTok join forces? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, Oracle was approved to purchase a 12.5% stake in TikTok Global in September 2019. Alexa, is Oracle an American company? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, Oracle Corporation is an American multinational computer technology corporation headquartered in Austin, Texas. So if American investors are the major shareholders of TikTok, what is the real reason behind acting like you want to ban it? Do you guys have any suggestions? Because I can't think of any. Not any good ones anyway. <laughs> this gentleman claims that if he had to pick between globe earth or flat earth, he would pick a flat earth. And he's got some really good reasons why reasons I have yet to hear. I'm not a flat earther or a globe earther, but if you force me to pick one, I pick flat earth for the following reasons. For one, we might have a credible scientific explanation for the firmament. And if you click on this comment and watch the original video, you'll see what I mean. But to make a long story short, the ozone layer is comprised of O3. O3 freezes into a solid at 420 degrees below Fahrenheit. Outer space, and flat earthers don't give me a hard time about that term, it's outer space. It's space out there. It's the best term we have. The temperature of outer space is negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit, making it colder than the freezing point of oxygen. Therefore, it's highly possible that that oxygen is freezing up there into a glass-like substance. When oxygen freezes, it turns a light blue. Hmm. 
Now, if oxygen is freezing at the top layer that touches space right below that, it would be liquid oxygen, which would, of course, explain the waters above. So how would solid and liquid oxygen stay all the way up there? Well, as soon as it got warm, it turned into a gas, and then it just flowed up there. And then it get cold again and turn into water and ice. Here's where it gets really interesting. A lot of people will tell you that the rainbow is shaped like a bow because each individual water drop is circular. That's an absolute BS lie. The water provides a screen. The rainbow is always there. We just can't see it all the time. When the rainfall happens, then we see the rainbow. So the rainbow is always a bow. And why? Because the light that is emitted from the prism reflects the shape of the prism. Because we live under a convex dome prism. Now, if you subscribe to the idea that the ice wall is all around the outside edges of the Earth, again, it would explain it connecting to the frozen firmament. When we get to the edge, we get to the coldest place, out in outer space. And why is it so cold? Well, people need to understand what energy, temperature, and time actually is. There's lots of people saying that you can't have temperature without matter. That's absolutely untrue. You just can't measure it without matter. But mark my words, if you stuck your hand outside into space, it would freeze. So why does this happen? Because there's nothing energetic happening out there. Therefore, all the energy from your hand would leave and go out into space to try to equalize, right? Because nature, matter, tends to try to find equilibrium in energy, in states of matter, etc., etc., Heat is directly correlated to energy. When something is energized, it heats up, right? So when you heat up a molecule, everything gets faster in there and it starts vibrating, right? That's energy. It requires energy for the molecule to vibrate. And the faster it vibrates, the more temperature it has, the more heat it has. So if you go out where there's no energy in outer space, which is very limited because all we're getting is the radiating energy from the sun, no convection, no conduction, Matter is going to get frozen into its solid state very quickly, no matter what the matter is. All matter freezes into a solid state at zero degrees Kelvin. Outer space is five degrees Kelvin. You only need five more degrees to be at absolute zero. And what happens at absolute zero? Time stops. Literally, time doesn't exist. Because what is time? Well, time is a construct created by human beings. And we use measurement devices. This is the only thing I disagree with him on. I do not think that time was created by human beings. Time was created by God during creation. This is to measure time. But those measurement devices need to be energized. Whether it's hands on a clock or the rotation of uh, electrons on a cesium atom. That now, we may have came up with the idea of keeping time. But time in itself was definitely created by God. <laughs> that requires energy to keep it into a cyclic state. It requires that energy. If there's no energy, if there's no temperature, then time doesn't pass. Interestingly enough, heaven is thought to be a timeless place. Well, technically, if heaven is outside of this firmament plane that we exist on, that it is in fact timeless if it gets to that place where there's no temperature. And for all the haters and trolls that are going to come into the comments and try to make fun of people that are interested in this theory or people who try to speculate on it and ask more questions, if you just come and say, oh, you're dumb, but then don't explain yourself, understand that you're the one that looks like you're dumb. Right. Looks like you're just trying to be the bully that doesn't understand something. Like right. Or if you say, oh, you act like you know everything when we are all just learning together. The problem that you have is not with me. <laughs> it's inside. We're in grade school. I'm not saying I'm entirely right about all this. Exactly. These are some interesting ideas to play with, especially since most scientists up at the top lie to us all the time. We don't know who to trust. So we're speculating based on logic. So if you're interested in having a healthy conversation with another human being, ask some questions, have conversations in the comments. And if you're going to be a jerk and a bully, because you can't wrap your head around these ideas, we're just going to block you. We really do need to speculate and talk about these topics. You don't need a Rockefeller education in order to do science. You just need your eyes, your ears, your senses, and, and a want, a, a thirst for knowledge.
And now we have a video on some symbolism found in a current popular beverage. Do you watch TV a lot? The tell lie vision? Well, I don't, but I just happened to the other day and this caught my eye. You are a human on earth. And throughout all of humanity's existence on earth, there have been ideas, strides, and accomplishments. You see, not only did it catch my eye because they were propagating the globe and the space shuttle to moon, but it's the mainstream. And if the mainstream's pushing it, there's ulterior motives. Always. So I had to investigate more. And it was right away that I investigated and found exactly what I knew I would. Because on the very first page of the very first ad of their own website, they have this. And not only do they have it inverted, so you can see that it's clearly 666, but the very next ad had it as well with the circle here and 666. Six. You see, this is what they do. They try to get everybody. And for the people who are trying to make smarter decisions, they offer you a smarter, healthier option. Yes. But then they put this in it, natural flavors, and they don't have to tell you what those are. But I know what they are. Because not too long ago, LaCroix, the healthier brand, got sued for having roach poison in their natural flavors. So you can go ahead and continue to have their products. Their products with serpent eyes and the logos in 666 everywhere, but not me. I'll be saying no to Poppy. I, I gotta sit down. No, Poppy, no. And yes, you better believe they would do that subtle of predictive programming. As always though, only entertainment here. I'm not serious about a thing. Even if you are purchasing your food from the organic, you know, more expensive section, you need to check the labels because natural flavors are allowed in everything in the grocery store today. And the fact that they can lump a whole bunch of things that are bad for you under the term natural flavors is scary. Our last video for today is going to delve deep into the name of our Lord Jesus. The name of our Savior, the Lord is salvation. So we have Yehoshua, Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus, and Jesus. And I'll explain all this now. Yehoshua is derived from Yehovah or Yahweh and Yasha. Yasha meaning deliverer or savior. So here we have Yehovah or Yahweh or Yehovah, the yod heh vav -Hey, and then Yasha. Isaiah 43, 11, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior, Yasha. Each one of these Hebrew names begins with the letter Yod, which produces a Y or Y sound. Now Yeshua is simply a compressed form of Yehoshua, which is transliterated to Jesus in Greek, then transliterated into Latin as Jesus, and then English as Jesus. Both Yehoshua and Yeshua are translated as Joshua throughout the Old Testament, and both names have the same meaning. The Lord Yehovah is salvation. Exactly. So translating and transliterating a name into the language you are speaking does not change the name at all. The Hebrew Ye is equivalent to the Greek IE. So when we say it in Greek, we generally emphasize it by saying Iesu. But phonetically and fluently, it's literally just Yesu, so we have the Ye sound. So the I and the E produce a Y sound. And now, when we add the S at the end, it indicates a name in Greek. Yesu, as just a general word, and then Yesus as a name, generally a male name. Now I'm going to cover the letter J. The classical Latin alphabet had no letter J. The letter I served as both a vowel and a consonant. As time went on, J was introduced and a distinction arose between I and J, with I representing the vowel and J representing the consonant. So in Latin, this I right here actually produced a J sound. It was a J. So in Latin, it is exactly the same as English, Jesus. Late and Middle English wrote the name Jesus the same and phonetics were the same. In the 1400s, the letter J was added into the English alphabet to replace instances of the letter I. Majority of the English language is derived from Latin. So there is absolutely no problem with the letter J. Because the letter I, being used as a consonant, had the phonetics of the same J sound. So there has always been a J, it just wasn't a distinction between the shape of the letter until roughly the 1400s. And this is the name of our Savior. In Hebrew, Greek, 
Latin, and English. Done. And no matter what, our God is all powerful and he understands his name in any language. And so if someone tells you that if you worship Jesus, you love Jesus, you use the name Jesus, that you're not calling on your God, they are wrong. And something as small as a translation and transliteration is big enough to make our God know that <laughs> not know that you're talking to him is crazy. Like, he knows. I promise. He knows. <laughs> As always, sound off in the comments. I want to know what you guys think about everything that we talked about today. Do you believe that it is possible that Ham is the actual father of Canon, and this could be where the Nephilim DNA came from the second time after the flood? Also, do you believe that they found that device under the tomb of Nimrod? And furthermore, are they using this technology today? I love you guys, and I thank you for coming back to hang out with me again. Until next time, stay prayed up and stay highly motivated.